This is a really special episode today. We actually have Kimberly Ernsberger on the show, and she is a former client. This is a success story. You're going to learn all about how Carolina's matchmaker works, what our coaching program looks like, and you get to hear a success story, which is always my favorite ones. Welcome to the Love on the Go podcast, brought to you by Carolina's Matchmaker. I'm Lori Burzak. And for over 17 years, I've been helping singles find the relationship of their dreams all over the Carolinas. Along the journey, I've met so many amazing professionals and experts from various fields, and I'm excited to introduce them to you. What's my goal? I want to help you look at love and relationships in a new way and to grow in your understanding of how love works. Let's learn together how people have overcome personal obstacles and have found love first and foremost with themselves. The ultimate goal is realizing that you are worthy and deserving of love. Let's get started. So Kim is a native Charlottean where she works in the financial industry as a program manager. And when she's not working, she enjoys backyard adventures with her son and long walks with her dog. Um, Kim has dedicated herself to personal wellness and finding balance in everyday life And boy, you're amazing. You're a fitness instructor in addition to working and being a mom and a girlfriend. So that's fabulous. (laughs) And in her spare time, she encourages others through her writing, offering insights into surviving heartbreak and practical steps of untangling identity from trauma to living authentically after divorce. Um, As the middle of five, the remainder of her time is spent playing family referee. That is hilarious. Welcome, (laughs) Kim. (laughs) Thank you. Thanks for having me, Lori. (laughs) Yes. So I'm just going to start out by asking you, like, what you, you, you bought our online dating management program, which is a Mm -hmm. super popular program that I offer to women and men. It's a three month program. What prompted you to reach out to my company and hire me? Yeah, I think um, first and foremost, like, um, I really got tagged or brought in over a year before, um, I even reached out to y'all. Um, I started following you on social media, um, your videos, your conversations, your podcast, things like that. Really. I just followed, I just listened, um, great tips, great advice. Um, but even when I reached before I even reached out, like I was still on my own healing journey. And so once I came to a point where I started dating again and opening myself up to love, mm-hmm. and I started using some o- other online applications and tools that people have access to. And then I finally realized after trying it on my own that I needed someone else in my corner. I needed someone who was going to have my back in this dating Mm -hmm. world because I had been out of the game for over a decade and I realized my limitations had been met. So I filled out an application and I got a quick response after doing that, a a nice phone call. And um, that's how it kind of started for me. Yeah. Wonderful. And why did, maybe we need to go back a little bit. So you are divorced and you have a child. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. And how long were you married? So, yeah, I got married really young. I was 24. um, And we were married by the time we got divorced, it had been 10 years. So um, we separated in 2021 in December and I just took time for myself. So throughout the separation and then even after we were divorced, I just didn't want to date. Um, So, yes, I have one son who is now three years old. And then, um, you know, not only was it daunting coming into the dating world again after a decade, I was also a single mom. Yeah. (laughs) So it added the complexity to it of, I didn't have a whole lot of time to date and I, I needed someone who could help me in that journey because I knew I wanted to find love again. So, yeah. So you wanted to be really purposeful and Mm -hmm. intuitive and coached through the people that you were even thinking about going on a date with. So you didn't waste any time at all. Yeah, no, my time is valuable and I wanted to be intentional and not, I had tried other, other avenues and I just wasted, not wasted a lot of time, but just expended a lot of energy swirling. Yes. Um, And I needed someone to help stop the swirl. Yes. Oh, I love that. Cause that is what people do. They'll just Mm -hmm. leave that at night 
kind of like me on TikTok. <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> and just just swipe 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 because they've right. got nothing else to do because they're thinking this is what will end the loneliness and mm -hmm. sometimes without any intention of getting in touch with the person or anything they're just looking for a little bit of a hit a dopamine yeah. hit oh that person likes me I mean I'm sure some of you can relate to what I'm saying um it's you know kind of like online gambling a little bit sometimes it gets like a little intensive and people just get really far off the balance beam. Yeah. And I, I feel like people nowadays are always looking for the best connection possible. Mm. Right. And they're always like, well, I have this great connection with someone, but could I have a better one? Right. Yeah. And it's not about finding the best connection for everyone else that fits everyone. It's about finding a unique connection that works best for you. Yes. And the only way I was able to do that was through getting a coach. <laughs> yes. So when you came in, um, there were two things that were most important to you. One was your faith and finding somebody that would walk on a similar faith journey as you. Yeah. And also you wanted to make sure that the, the times that you had to go out, were going to fit into your calendar, you yeah. know, the, that those two items, do you feel like you were successful with those two things? in the rollout? Yeah. So I had, um, so I think when I, when I came into it, I talked with my coach and I was like, I really am wanting to look for someone who shares the same religious uh, view as me. That's really important to me. And for any potential relationship I actually want to enter into. Yes. And I remember having that conversation with my coach and it was, and even you and being like, well, it could reduce the pool if you're looking for someone who has the same standard of um practice in their religion as you do and I was like you know what it's okay I'd yep. rather I'd rather wait for the person that's right for me yep. um and I felt empowered through um Carolina's matchmaker to do that like it was you you all agreed with me and gave me yep. the realistic you know expectation but also said you know you know who you are we want you to chase after the person you want to find um, so that, that was really successful. And then I think with like timing, you know, I only have so many days per week, um, that I could date, um, when my son was with his dad. And so I felt successful in that too, because, um, you know, kind of eased into it, kind of found the times that worked and just, if I couldn't do it, I couldn't do it. Or, found some creative solutions like an, an online date or something that was a little different that would work with my schedule and theirs. Perfect. All right. So lead us through what happens with the rollout in terms of the styling and the photography and all the good stuff. Yes. Oh, that was really fun. Right? <laughs> um, it was so fun. And like, um, just you feel special, like you feel you know, empowered. And I think for me, you know, I had done a lot of healing internally mm -hmm. and even just meeting with the stylist and having your makeup done and having a photographer, it was, it empowered me in a different way that made me feel, um, just beautiful, um, inside and out. Um, and especially after being a mom and having a kid, you know, your body's a little different. You look a little different than you did in your twenties and, sure. Um, but it was really great. So it started off with, you know, an initial styling session, which was so much fun, just shopping. Right. And I, it was just time for me to have clothes that, you know, we didn't matter how many clothes we tried on. It was about finding the right fit, finding the right color palette, finding what expressed me and not forcing me into clothes that were, you know, they didn't look like me. Right. It was for me. It was customized, which is really great. Um, and like some tips too, about, you know, how to, how to wear something or, you know, this might work really great with this or different options you may have at home. So it actually helped blend well into my current wardrobe versus complete overhaul, right? <laughs> Which totally. was important. So we started with the session styling session, and then we got scheduled for a photography shoot, which was, um, you know, that whole morning leading up to it, I had a little bit of butterflies because I was like, oh, this is just a bunch of photos of me. Um, right. <laughs> but it was so great. It was, um, you know, having someone there to do your makeup and just kind of sit there and 
relax and maybe um, they make you feel like you, but just kind of just different. Like you just feel like you're glowing. Um, and that, and then the photographer did a really good job um, kind of with the stylist, just kind of bringing out, you know, the true images of you, like playing to your personality. Like if you're super funny, we want to, you know, highlight that. If you are super athletic, like we kind of want to like show different sides of you so that people can see those in the photos where they, the words may not be enough. So mm -hmm. then after that, we, after we got the photos and kind of picked those out with my coach and giving some expert advice on what works well, um, in the online market, um, and coaching to the images that make me feel not only the most like myself, but also what will look best online, which was, was a good perspective. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what else did we do? Then we kind of had this meeting to kind of roll out, right. Um, helped build out my profile, you know, gathering information about more about me, like what, what passions I have and, um, what goals I have, what I like, what I don't like, and building out a profile that really at the end of the day was me in a nutshell, um, with this limited space that you have to describe a human being. Right. <laughs> exactly. And I know that we had lunch with you and really yes. got to know you well. Yeah. You all had face to face, which was, yep. which was really great. Mm -hmm. Just getting to know me. Um, and I think that's when we just kind of connected, like, okay, like this is going to be fun. <laughs> yes, totally. It's always a little nerve wracking ahead. Like what do I expect from this? Yes. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the last piece was just rolling out. So, you know, my coach and I just had um, a session where we just sat there and, you know, picked it out together, kind of started that process of what to look for, how to navigate the app, how to you know, devote the amount of time needed. And that was one big thing I would say with the whole process, anyone who's looking to do it, um, it, you have to, if you're going to hire you to do it, you have to commit yourself to the time because you also have to pull your weight in effort of, I need to show up. I need to make sure I'm looking. I need to make sure um, I'm actually trying for that three month process and being intentional with your time. So that's, yeah. I guess that's it. Did I miss anything? <laughs> no, but just so that people understand, um, when you met with your coach, it was on zoom for yes. five minutes, an hour, depending on, on the week. And yeah. at that time, the two of you would look through different people. So you were on Bumble. They, right. And for some people who are listening, who may or may not be on Bumble, there's going to be um, basically a match, uh, a beeline, which are kind of all the men that are, if we're talking to women, all the men that are interested in meeting you. And then once you look at them and sort of decide, yes, I'm interested in meeting him as well, they go into the match queue. Mm -hmm. Now, in order for you to even communicate, the man can't even reach out first. The woman needs to send a message to the guy first, and then it goes down to like kind of the DMs section of the app. So your coach and you kind of figured out together which men would be interesting together so that you could look at the pictures. She may or may not know your type. Sometimes we're not sure will our client be attracted to him or not. I mean, we've we've done it both ways where we'll do the searching and tag some people for our, our clients who are super busy. But I always like it when my coaches do it with the client because they go back and forth, talk about, and I've had Plenty of clients say, well, I wouldn't have given him a second thought, mm -hmm. but my coach said, why don't we look at him? Because he had all the qualities that you were looking for. Um, and a lot of the times he's already liked you first. Mm -hmm. So he, it's like, you're already like 80% of the way there. Um, and that's also what I love about online dating for women. You have options. It's like, you're not putting all your eggs in one basket and trying to figure out how can this person fit everything that you're looking for. You could be dating three, four guys at the same time. And you know what I always say, romantic light. Okay. Cause the minute you start sleeping with somebody, either a, you're going to get too attached or B, you may feel a little guilty about dating other people or C, if you're not feeling guilty, it just gets a little muddy. Mm -hmm. So one at a time, um, but you can date several people and um, just kind of see like, how's that person treating me? Is that person in touch? Do I like the way he's texting me? Is he asking me out enough? Like, what does it feel like when I'm on a date with him? And that's the kind of thing that our clients are talking to our coaches about. 
like what authentically is happening inside when you're going on it. And you mentioned earlier, Kim, that you did a lot of work and that you're, you're helping people with surviving heartbreak and practical steps of untangling identity from trauma and living authentically after divorce. Mm -hmm. And you did all that work ahead so that when you finally came to the table and started meeting people, you probably knew pretty early on if it was going to be a potential match, didn't you? Yeah, I think um, when you come to the table whole mm -hmm. in any any search for a relationship or love, if you're whole, you've you've done the work to heal as much as you can on your own. Yep. There's still like relational healing that has to happen that you can't get on your own. Yep. Someone else has to heal it. So when I would get into conversations with people where it was actually creating or rubbing up or bumping up against a wound versus healing that relational wound, I knew, I, I knew pretty early on that that was someone that I wasn't interested in and they weren't going to fit for me. Yes. But you're right. You get to practice. What does it feel like to have a conflict with someone and not walk yep. away, not right. scream and yell, not curse, but be able to have an authentic down to earth, meaningful conversation in a mature fashion. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of re relational healing. I would assume you're talking about yeah. where you have to practice and you right. can't isolate yourself and protect, put a huge armor around yourself. You need to actually try. Mm -hmm. So what, what, um, miss, did you have any misconception? Well, let me ask this first. You'd been online dating before. How did this feel different? Because a lot of people say to me, eh, I don't want to spend the money. I already, I'm already online dating. I already hate online dating. There are no good men out there. I've heard this so many times. <laughs> I so, think I I think I said that at the beginning. Everybody, <laughs> everybody does. And then a month later, they're like, yeah, I'll give it to that. Or they'll decide right then and there, I think I still want to try. Yeah. So what what misconceptions did you have about online dating? And how did this kind of turn? Like, how was this different from doing it on your own? So I think a big thing for me online dating alone is on doing it alone, but then coming with a coach is it's exhausting. Mm. I'll be honest. Like it's, it's exhausting to kind of have to flip through people, have to have conversations, have the same conversations a hundred times. Like, Hey, how are you? Tell me about yourself. Oh, okay. Uh, this is what I'm doing. What are you looking for? You know, these same, like, conversations over and over again. And I actually got burnt out from continuously meeting people. Okay. Um, I'm an extrovert, so I have no problem like in a crowd or anything, but online dating actually and doing it on my own kind of wore me out because I was having the same conversations and feeling like you keep hitting in a wall or getting nowhere with somebody is, it can be a little disheartening. Now I'll say you still have that same online dating in general, you'll still have that same interaction and you'll still have those moments where you're going to be introducing yourself multiple times to people. But the difference with a coach was I remember I had that wall that I hit with my coach and I said, I just feel like I'm having the same conversations over and over again. And I'm burnt out. And she was like, I'm an achiever. And she was like, well, you're going at it at a rapid pace. <laughs> you're going really, you you're, I was eager to find love. So I was going so fast, which I think is a pitfall for people who are wanting to online date going so quickly that you do get burnout fast and then you give up and then you get off the app but having a coach come beside you and was like hey you know what no problem take a week let's let's build up your queue let's you know you know if you're just feeling burnt out let's let's take a beat and come back um versus you know just quitting right um and that was the difference like you have a coach and a motivator and someone who will help you not give up. Yes. Like I said earlier, it's a three month commitment and I think it takes 21 days to establish a habit. Like this is longer than that. Yes. <laughs> you have to build endurance and a coach is there to kind of pull you back when you need to be pulled back, but then propel you forward when they really need to, mo you need to be motivated. So Right. And I'm glad you said that about habit because the truth of the matter is not everybody is, has, finds a boyfriend after three right. months, but right. you've learned how to do it because week in and week out, you've been sort of going along the system mm -hmm. and um, following through and then evaluation. And that's something that you can do on your own um, easily after three months or continue 
you know, with a month to month kind of a program. So right. what, what misconceptions do you think that women have about men in general, or even about online dating? Cause there's a lot of crap talk going on right now about men, a lot of negativity I have noticed in the marketplace. I think what I've seen over the years and just more recently is women have set a standard mm. and I know everyone has their own standard and there are some men who simply aren't wanting to change. There are women who are just not wanting to change. Mm. If someone doesn't meet your standard, they're just not for you. I feel like probably a negative opinion, but like both men and women in the dating world do the same things. We mm. ghost people. We don't respond. We just, you know, someone, maybe you're not really interested in, but they're pursuing you, but they're not really your type, or maybe you're not, you know, all in. We do the same things to them. We ghost them or we stop talking to them or we just like, it's just not working, which is, which is vulnerable to say, but I do think women are talking more about it now because we have the platform to do it. And we're, we're calling men to the line saying, hey, like we're asking for change. We want you to care about who you're dating, whether it's online dating or in person. Like, I mean, for me, one bad experience I had was just a guy who wanted to do a video date and, you know, he showed up 12 minutes late. And I, by that point I had already not I had ended the date because I was like, well, I showed up on time actually early because it's important to value someone else's time and you showed up late. Okay. And then he pinged me and was like, oh, you don't want to talk now? I was like, I just didn't respond because my time is important. Yep. Um, and I'm not saying that's a standard for everyone, but if someone wants to be with you and someone wants to make an effort, they will. A hundred percent. So I don't, I don't, I think some women may be doing an extreme, but I do think like, Hey, if, if you're seeing it out there and it's all on a platform where, you know, it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Yeah. I, I think it's okay to have a better standard or a higher standard for dating, even when it's online, because that's the majority of how people are meeting each other nowadays, right? <laughs> you're not meeting in a bar usually. <laughs> It really, it really is. And so while there's, you know, events that are starting to crop up, thank goodness, yeah. <laughs> um, more so in the different communities, it's still very much an online dating world at the moment. Mm -hmm. So what, what did you, what do you think was, it sounds like you had a little bit of a turning point when you kind of got a little burnt out and your coach said, mm -hmm. why don't you take a, a break? Is it right after that, that you met your current boyfriend? <laughs> Um, was he part so, of the, the, the big, you know, lots of dating section? Yeah, actually. Um, so I think we probably matched or had a match the first weekend I even launched, okay. but, um, I think I got burnt out within the first two weeks and then she was like, take a break. And then I think what I was noticing is like, people wanted to have a lot of conversations online, but no one wanted to ask you out. Hmm. Just taking, taking, Hey, we've talked for a week and a half or two weeks. Like, can we just, we seem to like each other enough to talk that long. Like, can we just meet? Um, and that's, that contributed. Um, but yeah, after that, actually I took a break and I kind of took a little bit of pressure off myself. And then we actually went on a date, I think the following weekend. Um, and, and, and we've been dating since then. <laughs> did you know right away that he was a one or did it take you a couple dates? It took a couple dates. Um, so I love yeah. that. Tell us more about that because I think a lot of women, especially are looking for fireworks on the first date. So tell yeah. us. Yeah. I mean, I think I was even looking for that because that was one of my misconceptions coming into it. Like I was like, I want fireworks. I want, I want that feeling of like, yes, this is him. Um, and I didn't have those right off the bat, but what I did have was a slow and consistent burn where we were able to connect on the same level. So after we met, I, you know, I went from away from the date and I was like, you know, it's, it's, it was a good date. Like we had a good time. He was very chivalrous. He was very kind. He was 
a great communicator. Um, we got to talk a lot about things. Um, you know, he walked me through to my car, um, was very polite, walked on the right side of the street so that I wouldn't, you know, <laughs> in case of emergency. But like those little things I noticed. So it was enough for me to be like, okay, like this person obviously cares about me as a human being mm -hmm. and cares about my well being. And that's important. And mm -hmm. so, you know, and I was attracted to him. And like there were things about him that the talking conversation we had before. And I was like, well, I'll just wait for him to reach out. Um, and then I remember being like, okay, a couple more days, I think two or three days went by and I finally reached out and I was like, Hey, <laughs> right. I had a great time. Um, which, you know, I'm knowing him now more, he is more introverted than I am. So I am more going to be the person that's like, Hey, I, let's, let's cut through whatever yeah. timeline we think people or standards have set. Like I'll just reach out and, you know, even the second date, I think he told me later, he said on by the second date, he's like, I knew I didn't want to date anyone else, <laughs> which was really sweet. Yeah. Um, but it did take me longer. I think about three dates. Yeah. And then after the third date, I was like, okay, I think I really care about this person. They clearly clear about, they care about me. They're communicative. They're always planning ahead. And he always comes with options. He's like, well, I have a couple options. Like, what would you like to do? Um, and he's always thinking about like, you know, me and like making sure at the very beginning, I was like, I'm a single, like, I'm, I'm a mom and, and I'm a single mom when I have my kid. And so I can't date all the time. And he yeah. was just very respectful of it. He's like, I totally get it. No problem. We'll, we'll work with you and, or we'll meet up for a coffee date. If you have time or a lunch date in the middle of the day. Right. Um, so yeah, it was a slow burn. And I think a lot of people expect fireworks, but um, I would rather have a consistent person who shows up mm -hmm. than have a fast burning fling. There you go. So I think a really important takeaway from this is for people that are listening that have gone on first dates, not really felt much, but respected them enough. Think, let me go out one more time. Okay, well, I still respect him and I had fun. Let me go out again. Just keep going out again until it's a clear no. But if you're on the fence, why not? It it can't hurt. If, if you look at him and you're like, I just could never kiss his lips and th that's a strong no. But if you're really not sure. Now- yeah. Is the faith piece there with, with your boyfriend? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay. So the two things that you came into the program with were, were hit properly. The faith piece was there and your concern about times to go out and when you would be able to date, he is completely helping with working around your schedule. So yeah. those are two very obvious, important items. Um, also, you are a professional woman. You've got a great job. You're well-respected in your industry. And I know that it was important to you to find someone who understood that, you know, about you and that, you know, you could also respect him with what he does career-wise. Yeah. Yeah. It Honestly, like I, when I think about it and I think about like, would we ever met, would we have ever met if I didn't go through Carolina's matchmaker? Probably not because we don't go to the same church. We don't have similar friend groups. We, although we're in the same city, um, we're, it's, it's a trail. It's huge. Um, you know, I am in a white collar job. He's in a blue collar job. Um, it's just very different, like different, um, backgrounds from family and just, we would have never found each other had I not taken the leap and, yeah. and done it because like I could, yeah. Could I have done it on my own? Probably. Maybe I could have found him, but I don't know how, like I, there would be, there would have been no connection that I had in um, my working world or whatever. And he's very respectful in my job and what I want to do, the passions I have, um, you know, and even like trying new things. I think, um, I enjoy mountain biking. And so he went mountain biking for the first time and just tried it. And he was such a trooper, you know, 
I think we did nine, almost 10 miles. And it was just, that was really important for someone who kind of met me where I was at and gave me the space I needed to continue to be successful in everything I wanted and the passions. So it was, I like, when I think about it, it's, it's really incredible that it happened. It's I'm so excited for you. So you all have been dating for five months. Has he met your child? Yes. He met my son in June. Um, we're kind of making our way through the family members and friend groups now. <laughs> it's been, um, we had some time for ourselves just to date and then, um, opening him up to my son, um, was really important and he understood that I wanted to wait, um, yeah. because I wanted to, I didn't want to bring anyone to, into my son's life without knowing that this person was going to be around for a while. Yes. Um, and even this last week, like he came over and brought my son a little Lego set and just wanted to spend time with him. And it was just, you know, so precious and being thoughtful about what to do with a three-year-old because, you know, not everyone knows and, and he doesn't have kids. And so coming to the table with something where he could connect with him was huge for me. So, and does he want to have kids with you too? He does. Yeah. We've, uh, <laughs> we've had the conversation. Um, I've never seen myself as a one child, um, mother. Um, yeah. we'll see what the future holds, but yeah, one day we both would like kids. So, yeah. Cause I remember having that conversation. I have chills. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so happy for you. Thank you. I'm really happy too. It's incredible. <laughs> I, I, I want regular updates. Absolutely. And- um, I just, I wish you all the best. I, it is really, it's been so amazing working with you. Uh, you're really a wonderful client. Well, thank you for having me. It's like, I, I couldn't do this on my own. So I'm gl- so glad and grateful that I got a whole year before I even reached out to y'all to kind of get to know you. Right. And mm-hmm. then really get to know you working with you all and your team, like, Finding love is hard enough. Having someone in your corner, you you can't put a, a dollar amount on it. Like you just can't. So I appreciate it. Thank you all for, for helping me and giving me skills that I can use, um, you know, no matter what happens in life. So. Thank you. Thanks, Kim. We will speak very soon. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for listening to Love on the Go. I hope you join us on our next episode. You can make sure to know when it is by following us wherever you listen to podcasts. Also, if you enjoyed it, it'd be great if you left us a review. I'd appreciate it. In the meantime, to learn more about me and how my team can help you, visit carolinasmatchmaker.com. Until next time.